17 seagulls flew away, and then there were none. Toast, Jake? No thanks, Mum. Oh, no thanks, Kay. Right after this next commercial. This is the electric octopus, a danger you should avoid in your home. Adding another power point is cheaper than setting your house on fire. Check cords and plugs. If damaged, have them repaired by a qualified electrician or replaced with new equipment. Never use a portable radiator or heater in the bathroom. Electricity and water can make a fatal combination. Don't try to fix broken appliances yourself. Leave it to a qualified electrician. Electricity. Play it safe. <laughs> I wonder why they put that sort of commercial on at this time of the morning. Nobody's going to take any notice. Anyway, it's all a load of rubbish. And it must have cost thousands. So to use that money to reduce our bill would have been a damn sight better. <laughs> Well, time to be off. Let's make a move, Tony. Jack Austin is the storeman and general Mr. Fixit of Simmons Construction. He does a pretty good job. He lets his workmates believe he's a licensed electrician. But in fact, he's not. However, this doesn't prevent him from maintaining and repairing all the electrical equipment on the site. It'd be a loss of face if Jack had to send anything out for repairs, so Jack fixes everything. When he's got time, that is. It's going to be warm today. Yeah, I reckon. Well, what can I do for you? Uh, a box of Donna Bells, thanks, Jack. Donna Bells? Now, yeah, look, Jack. That angle grind I'm using, mate, it's packed it in again. Now, look, it's only working when it feels like it. You know, you reckon you can have a look at it for me later? Okay, okay, keep your shirt on. I'll try and have a look at it later. Look, okay. uh, thanks, mate. Tony Austin is an apprentice carpenter. Like his father, he's a pretty conscientious worker. He's willing to learn, but at the same time, he's a bit of a dreamer. Kay Austin is very methodical about her housework. She allots a certain amount of time for each job and generally things run quite smoothly. But today she, or her husband, or her son, are going to be responsible for someone's death by electrocution. That's one sure way of causing an electrical fault. Portable tools and the electrical connections are pretty rugged, but they can't be made to withstand treatment like that forever. Sooner or later, the connections inside the housing or in the socket and plug are going to work loose. Are you trying to kill someone, Tony? Get rid of that lead and get a proper one from the store. And while you're about it, get some protection where it crosses the traffic way, OK? Yeah, OK. I'll just finish these for you, then I'll fix it. Electricity is a most versatile form of energy, but failure to use it correctly is potentially lethal. Never take a chance with electrical safety. Don't rely on luck to survive death or injury. Jack's not trusting to luck. If any work has to be done on the circuit, switch off, take out the fuse, and fix a tag securely over the fuse holder and switch. And then lock the door.
But Kay's pushing her luck. Those appliances are overloading the circuit. It's a wonder the fuse hasn't blown by now. Unless, of course, Jack's fiddled with a fuse wire, in which case something's eventually going to go. And the chances of the house catching fire are pretty good. One form of supplementary protection is a current-operated core balance earth leakage device. If there's any leakage in the circuit, then it automatically trips and breaks the flow of current. This unit is protecting only one operator. Protection of all leads, either by switchboard mounted or portable units, is what is needed. But, good as they are, there's nothing to equal good regular maintenance of equipment by a licensed electrician. Faulty cords and plugs are by far the greatest cause of electrical accidents, and incorrect wiring contributes to this high fatality rate. Nearly finished, mate. It's really pretty simple. The green, or the green and yellow wire, must be connected to the earth pin. There you are, mate. All done. Thanks, Jack. That's better, but still not good enough. The foreman will want better protection than that. This bloke believes in living dangerously. If that lead touches the drill, he wouldn't know what hit him. And here's another potential death trap. A twin core lead should never be used on any tool that requires an earth lead, as is the case with this drill. If the active lead worked loose or chafed through, or even only one single strand of the wire touched the housing, then there's only one way for the current to go, and that's through his body. Double insulated tools, of course, are the exception. These tools have inbuilt double insulation and don't require an earth lead. They're supplied when new with a twin core lead only and marked double insulated or have this international symbol. So never attempt to connect an earth on these. Hey, Bill! Bill! Pass it down, I'll have a go at it. Uh, right, no, thanks, mate. Maintenance of equipment doesn't often extend to the crib room. This jug is a real death trap, and the urn looks as if it's never been checked since it left the factory. If it's still got a satisfactory electrical connection inside, then it's only due to good luck. The urn on time? Yeah, just did it. Sure. Yeah, it should be right by lunchtime, all right? Oh, that's obviously the problem, Bill. <laughs> Not worth mucking around with that plug. We'll chop it off and put a new one on. Right, Just to make sure that nobody uses this one again. Of course, there's always someone on the job who has to check everything. If the urn's not boiling by lunchtime, Tony's for it. No worries this time. Well, Joan, would you make that tea and I'll just finish some biscuits. Oh, OK. Uh, which tea caddy do you want? Red one. Right. Lucky leaving a jug boiling for all that time, with a damaged plug and all that moisture about, she could quite easily have been electrocuted. And she's leaving a hazard for someone else. There's never any excuse for not switching off the power at the point on the wall.
Well, somebody's learning. Mangrove's plugged in, mate. Right up. Ah! Bill Richardson died as a result of an electrical accident. An inquiry soon found that faulty wiring on the angle grinder was the cause of the accident. Jack Austin wired the new plug correctly, that is, he had the green to earth, but what he didn't do was to check the connections inside the grinder. Somebody, obviously years ago, had used the green lead and another one to carry the current. Although Jack correctly rewired the plug, a live lead now carried the current directly to the grinder housing. With fatal results. Accidents like this are not uncommon. One thing is certain, if a licensed electrician had carried out the repairs, then this fatality would not have happened. <laughs>